नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू इंसॉल्वेंसी वेटरन्स ए यूनिक टॉक शो वेयर यू कैन हियर द एक्सपर्ट्स एंड प्रैक्टिशनर्स हु हैव बीन इंस्ट्रूमेंटल इन शेपिंग एंड इंप्लीमेंटिंग द इंसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक्रप्सी कोड आई बी सी एंड हु हैव ए डीप अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ इट्स इंप्लीकेशन एंड चैलेंजेस I am your host Rajesh Sharma a former member of National Company Law Tribunal In this talk show we will explore various aspects of IBC such as its objectives principles processes outcomes and impact on the Indian economy and society We will also discuss the current issues and challenges faced by the stakeholders involved in the insolvency resolution process such as creditors debtors resolution professionals adjudicating authorities regulators and courts in each episode we will have an eminent guest who is either a sitting or former member of nclt or nclat that is the appellate tribunal senior functionary of the regulatory insolvency and bankruptcy board of india or a renowned expert in the field of insolvency law and practice today i have the honor of introducing our esteemed guest dr ashok kumar mishra welcome dr mishra thank you mr thank you. sharma uh, who is a distinguished fellow in the indian institute of corporate affairs a government of india nominee in the governing council of the institute of company secretaries of india he is independent director of the icai registered value organization and also he is a professor of practice in law and finance at jamia hamdar university formerly he was the member of both national company law tribunal and national company law appellate tribunal he is one of the distinguished person who has remained member of both nclt and nclat he remained director finance of hindustan aeronautics limited he holds a phd and lld degree and most importantly beside all other things the bonding which both of us share is that both of us are chartered accountants you have uh, explained perhaps more than what am i i since both of us are a professional colleagues of the institute of chartered accountants of india we will hold the esteem of our profession always in mind thank you mr sir we are honored to have dr mishra on the show but before we begin our discussions i would like to explain the meaning of the name of this talk show insolvency veterans the name is a thoughtful play on words that captures the essence of ibc the word in has been written in red it signifies the state of financial stress or insolvency that many companies face due to various reasons the word solvency in black signifies the aim of the ibc to restore the financial health and viability of such companies through a time bound and transparent resolution process the word veterans refer to the experts and practitioners who have been involved in the evolution and implementation of ibc and who have a wealth of knowledge and experience to share with us thus the name insolvency veterans reflects the theme and purpose of this talk show which is to educate and enlighten the viewers about the ibc and its impact on the indian economy and society please join me in welcoming our esteemed guest of the day dr ashok kumar mishra in your opening remarks 
please share your thoughts about this talk show initiative insolvency veterans and how do you perceive that it will be helpful in further strengthening of the ibc regime in india this is one of the best initiative we have done why i am telling you because the requirement today considering the law of ibc is totally different than than any other civil law this law is not meant for recovery of money only recovery of money but rather it has to bring the organization which is in bad health how it can be retrieved and as also it has to put in order the economy of the country as we all know our government of india annual budget government of india annual budget is over uh, 40 lakh crore sorry government of india annual budget is more than 45 lakh crore and one fourth of this money was blocked when this act has come into force even for the banks so it is a, it was this initiative was taken by government of india to bring in track the large accumulation of npa now so far lot of books are available on insolvency law or ibc including i myself have written a book book can tell you about the primary law what it is but let me to be very frank the, how to explain that law how to bring the blood into the body is an important aspect now your this program which is a program which is giving you then in depth about the concepts about the process about the proposition of law or about certain clarification on the law is a great incentive not only for the professionals in this field but even for the members of nclt nclat and other forums even for the students who because nowadays it is come it is more or less taking a shape both in the management schools and in the law schools in the management school also it is being considered as one of the prime subject because all the management graduates are supposed to know about it and so is the case with the law graduates reading the bayer act reading these descriptive books will not help them unless they understand the concept mr sharma you have brought one of the best concept i wish you all the best thank you very much uh, dr mishra how do you evaluate the qualification of the chartered accountancy how it has helped you in discharging your function as member of nclt as well as as member of nclad basic thanks mr sharma it all it is also a very good question for the professional let me tell you the chartered accountant or the chartered accountancy examination procedures or the way of the profession provides the one with a very strong hold on how to develop the reasoning analysis and how to firm up those reasoning in actual in practical life so as a chartered charter as a chartered accountant you will go into the building up of the reasoning and based on reasoning only you will provide the outcome both nclt and nclat who are required to follow the law because we are not these authorities are not having a writ jurisdiction they have to follow whatever the law has been passed by the on by the legislature so they have to restrict to that so this reasoning principle will help both in and helped me both in nclt and nclat uh, dr mishra what has inspired you to choose and shape your career integrity is the first principle of my life integrity is one of the most important thing because i belong to the family of teachers or professors so integrity i considered as the highest input or highest objective of your life that you continue to follow and a chartered accountant who is supposed to do the auditing or who is supposed to build keep the organization in a going concern concept 
has to have integrity so it is only my integrity which saved me because i started my working from government of bihar and i left the bihar government within 3 4 years why i left if somebody asked me so it is not to be so clearly told because certain environments where you cannot maintain integrity you must opt for a, a change in the profession and then from the government of bihar i came to government of up then also work then choose to go to the central government organization finally after becoming director finance and cfo and on getting superinvasion with god's grace i get into this track of nclt and nclat which i feel was one of the best choice for me what are some of the biggest challenges or obstacles you have faced in your journey as a finance man you will have always you will be one is to 10 because 9% will be opposing you and uh, you have to face that so once you become a finance professional particularly a chartered accountant you know how to handle the 9 persons so that gives you the one of the best training and based on that you can always have your continuing journey so truly said uh, dr mishra you see uh, i have also remained finance man throughout my life and uh, <laughs> and i'll tell you that you know there are two basic things which are required one is the basically your conviction should be strong and second is courage if you have these two things available with you i don't think anybody can beat you in in the process conviction and courage these are the two things good 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 <clears throat> what are some of the most valuable lessons you have learned from your experience of the mission a chartered accountant in my opinion can work in any field i have worked not only in the manufacturing area initially i have also worked in the listed company i was the second man in the finance department of a very large private sector organization of kothari group from there i started then i joined the government and all these thing has happened chartered accountant is supposed to be hard working sincere generally will maintain a very high degree of integrity and have also the capability to face one is to 10 so we, if you have got this quality you should be prepared to work in any field manu- whether it is a manufacturing organization construction organization as i have worked and uh, then even in consultancy organization i have also worked as a project manager and uh, finally whatever the finance people reach to the highest position as director finance and cfo after reaching in the largest defense psu of india even famous for asia or the worldwide hal hindustan aeronautics limited i superannuated i thought i may not have any opening other than going for my practice but you see once you are a chartered accountant you have a capability to present you have a capability to introduce yourself properly you will be selected in any field wherever you work i have worked in multiple field and this gave me a one good training that i must have a high degree of integrity devotion to the work to build the organization to grow the organization to nurture the organization not only that to keep my colleagues also going and growing uh, dr mishra uh, i have seen that you had to you know dislocate yourself so many times Correct. how do you balance your personal life and professional life <laughs> it is a very interesting <laughs> question at this age of 67 plus i agree with you i have worked at different places starting from calcutta to patna to lucknow in up several places 
Kanpur, Mankapur, all these places. I'm finally landed to Bangalore. I thought it is end, but then again came back to Delhi, and currently I am in Delhi. You see, we mean we talk a lot about the work-life balance. People talk about the balancing of relationship between husband and wife. Not only this is important. You, I feel that you groom your children. in the best manner that is the first balancing of life if you groom your children if the children are well settled they are in a very good position and at the same time keeping the life partner also in a balanced way although it is very difficult but you have to make you have different task in life you have to keep of your parents you have to also keep up your children and wife also so work life balance means you have to balance all the factors and i have seen when you are holding a particular position and you have got certain infrastructure available with you you can maintain all those things only what is required is your calm mind and your again integrity to all the relatives thank you that's so true uh, dr mishra you know we can see lot of essays written on work life balance but the most beautiful part is that there is no set formula for that everybody has to uh, act according to his own fact circumstances Correct. i agree family circumstances you. i agree I agree 100% agree. Uh, and this will be different for everybody I agree. I agree. Not, no set formula can be given to anybody. That this is the best combination you should have. No, Correct. nobody. Uh, now, let us come to the core and central theme of the talk show. Although you have delivered ample number of judgments as member NCLT, I believe about two thousand or so, and as NCLT member, you have delivered more than. 250 uh, cases or so our research team has identified a few judgments worth quoting and discussing with you in person let us take up these cases one by one and let us hear the views of the judge himself as to what was in his mind while delivering that specific judgment i must mention here that normally we have pronounced judgments in front of us to read and elaborate the findings the thing which makes this talk show insolvency veterans a unique one is that it is the rarest opportunity for our audience where the judge himself is disclosing as to what was going on in his mind while writing a particular judgment now in one of your cases uh, dr mishra that is aristo alert residents association versus prestige estate projects limited you propounded the fact that the principles of equity cannot be applied while considering the provisions of the ibc can you can you elaborate that that what was in your mind while propounding this thing uh, thank you mr sharma you have raised good issue and at the same time i can tell you whenever i was writing a judgment i was not thinking whether a superior court will maintain the same or whether it has a different impact what i was thinking i must have my integrity to the profession must keep in mind the provisions of law laid down by the honorable apex court and we must be fair to the law and fair to the party now in this case aristo alert resident association one thing was all very clear the matter of this case is very smooth a one issue that they this particular group of uh some 80 90 uh, 
flat owners they were provided a place what was mentioned in their original program they gave it three times of that plot but since the company has become six so naturally they have to readjust all the things so at x place say they have got 1000 square foot at y place they were given 3000 square foot within the same locality within the same surroundings they were having a problem these eight they were only hardly 8% uh, of the total strength of the flat owners now these 8% wanted to manipulate the 92% because when the company is becoming sick any resolution applicant must have provided a plan keeping in mind how the organization can be reactivated how all the flat owners can be provided this space those who are dissenting can always be paid the liquidation value it is the provision of law not to disturb the majority now in this case they have provided the plot everything is there they were getting a plots of the value of which is 24000 per square foot they have this resolution applicant is asking hardly 3300 per square foot additional amount now even considering all those aspects they were getting more than 100% gain now they were creating these problem every time bringing some ia ma and thereby this disturbance was there now we all know there are law laid down by the honorable apex court maharashtra seamless seamless pratap technocrat i think pratap technocrat para 29 maharashtra seamless seamless para 30 where it has been clearly brought out the principle of equity cannot be brought into ibc IBC is a law laid down the uh, 240 245 sections and along with some schedules we have to work within the, those boundaries and accordingly so these uh, we have to dismiss the appeal there was no other alternative thank you uh, dr mishra to give the insight about the case and what was in your mind you know you see as a matter of fact the entire company act as well as the IBC they prevail they on the basis of majority in ibc you have coc which takes care of the uh, entire decision of the resolution and in company act the entire company act is on the basis of majority rule except section 241 242 which has been called out for minority players now a minority which is coming and trying to impose on the majority that was not done and i think you have uh, taken a uh, you have rightly rejected that and honorable apex court hold the same view yes. they have not interfered it mm-hmm. so it is stand the scrutiny of laws uh, dr mishra in one of the important case <laughs> doha bank qpsc versus anish nanavati rp of corporate debtor you held something please uh, deliberate is, on that this is a case mm-hmm. where what we are treating deed of hypothecation as deed of guarantee deed of guarantee is a different connotation under the law deed of hypothecation has a different connotation hypothecation where you mortgage your property and in case you fail in the maintaining the default that property will be liquidated to recoup certain money now deed of guarantee and it may may be for the full it may come out as a full value or it may, may come out as a partial value while in a deed of guarantee you are guaranteeing you are assuring that you are going to pay them full amount particularly whatever as agreed so both are different connotation now what has happened in this case the resolution professional and the adjudicating authority both have have miss conception and since there was a clause in deed of hypothecation where it was mentioned any deficiency of the amount on realization of these property will be borne by the individual party to that deed of hypothecation now the question is coming up whoever party who has to bear that cost they were not the even the guarantors in this case now some of the party were not even the guarantors 
now there was nothing a term like a guarantee where you are guaranteeing that you will be paid the full amount now what we have based on this we have uh, considered these party as financial creditor how a party of deed of hypothecation will become finance related it was not very clear so per force because of this confusion we have to set aside the order honorable apex court has also maintained our order and finally it stands the scrutiny of law because the deed of guarantee is very clear in the preamble itself it will provide everything the type of full guarantee it is not a partial type of thing even if it is a partial guarantee it will be mentioned like it is a partial guarantee so that was the confusion and i think this is a law laid down on this subject now the a deed of hypothecation cannot be equated with deed of guarantee absolutely right you are dr mishra you see basically the deed of guarantee gives a an additional comfort to the lender hmm. that the guarantee guarantor will be making good for any losses for uh, over and above the borrower also uh, yeah that's right thank you very much for this uh, insight of the case and uh, in one case budpur wildcon private limited versus abhay narayan manudhane rp of housing development and infrastructure limited you have held that interest per se in any business contract cannot be termed to make the debt as a financial debt if it is in the nature of liquidated damages or in the nature of penal interest which is a result of compensation for breach of contract which is stipulated for penalty it cannot be held that they are financial creditors mr sharma you are also a chartered accountant i am also a chartered accountant both ld liquidated damages and financial debt are different entirely, concepts entirely different it, things yes. whether it is accounting mm. whether it is finance whether it is costing mm. whichever area you consider both are different concepts now a certain clause in certain contract that if you do not execute a particular part of the contract you are going to be charged interest at the rate of 24% or so that was the amount that was in the agreement now that was the in the format of a delayed if there is a delay then they will charge you that thing charging for a delay which is in the nature of a liquidated damages or a penalty how it can be treated as financial debt if my memory is correct section 5 sub section 28 of the ibc so it is virtually a case of section 74 of the contract act where you are levying ld for recovering or for making up certain losses that you have suffered because a certain contract has not been executed well in time so i think mr sharma you have understood this yeah. and i was having no other uh, intention and i have to dismiss the appeal and on luckily and not only that honorable apex court has also confirmed nclat view or my view you Thank see if you. we talk about liquidated damages it is basically a penalty it is basically a penalty, penalty. imposed on uh, the, the uh, on correct. the other correct. side correct correct and when you are charging interest on the liquidated damages it cannot become or take the uh, shape of a financial let debt me, let me clarify you uh, uh, that liquidated damages is always can be in any format it can be an absolute amount it can be an absolute amount it can be on a percentage basis it can be as a finance charge it can take any format because the format is of penalty and a recovery yeah. to maintain or to absorb that loss a portion of the loss or full loss so even if it is mentioned that interest at the rate of certain percent will be charged for such and such sum and it is as a result of deviation from the contract because you have not finalized the contract within due time is always will be termed as liquidated damages 
subsection 5, subsection 28 of IBC is very much clear. What type of what type of element, although being an ex inclusive definition, what type of debt will you finance? Absolutely Thank right. You, Absolutely right. Uh, in one of the cases, Sudhir Kumar Goyal, promoter of Shashi Oil and Fats Private Limited versus Shashi Oil and Fats Private Limited, you held that once after the completion of liquidation, an application is filed by the liquidator of a corporate debtor for its dissolution to the adjudicating authority who has no option but to pass the order of dissolution. Thank you, Mr. Sarma, but <laughs> I think this was the only case where the fact of the case were a bit slightly different because what has happened that the CD has originally submitted a proposal to the financial creditor that they want to take over, take the company back and whatever is the certain proposal value, certain proposal value were mentioned. Financial creditor didn't agree or were not satisfied with the proposal. Then uh, CD has submitted a revised proposal. Revised proposal was accepted by the bank, but it was the year 2020. In January, they gave the revised proposal. And from March 20, COVID pandemic came. Now, as a result of the COVID pandemic, most of the things were in a hotspot state. And in the meantime, the process of CIRP was going on. And as a result, at a latter stage, when all these processes, it has gone by, liquidation order was passed, properties were, all properties were liquidated, sold. The company was just to maintain a dissolution, if my memory is correct, a formality now under Section 54 for the closure of the company. Now, when all these stages have crossed, when the case has been perhaps in force from 2018 or so, then it becomes very difficult to revive anything done. You cannot do everything from any scratch. So the law demands that when and section 54 clearly lays down the criteria. If you are coming within that criteria and rightly so the adjudicating authority has not allowed the petition or has uh, concurred with the respondent then in this case, we have no other option, but we have to dismiss the appeal and uh, Honorable Apex Court also hold our view. Uh, Dr. Mishra, uh, you see basically in IBC, resolution is the process and resolution must be tried to the best possible. However, if resolution is not possible, then one has to go for liquidation. And if liquidation is done, then the final outcome is dissolution of the company. That's what that was considered. Whatever you are telling, <laughs> considering that aspect also only, <laughs> we have no other alternative other, but to, but to the agree company. with the adjudicating authority yes. that uh, they have rightly handled the case. In Partha Paul versus Kotak Mahindra Bank, oh, you, you basically held that IBC cannot be used for forum shopping. <laughs> this is a unique case which, where I have seen the bank has given the loan to the trust for it for proliferating the educational field. Now that it will be astonished to know that rate of interest that bank is charging is 24% per annum. Now it first of all it itself was not heard of. I think loan was something around Principal sum was around 10 crore. They have already paid more than 18 crore to them. Uh, so, considering all these things, it was also observed that the bank has, case has been filed at Honorable High Court of Calcutta. So many platforms it was going on. And the guarantors were in to harass the guarantor. Basically, it is a case of harassing the guarantor. Forum shopping was involved. When Honorable Apex Court has already let down the law on this subject in Swadeshi Cotton Mills and as also in Menka Gandhi versus Union of India 1978-1-SCC-248 that forum shopping cannot be a basis. Now considering these facts and circumstances, we have no other alternative but to 
allow the appeal and we dismiss the order of the tribunal and honorable apex court has also stood and confirmed our view uh, dr mishra uh, you see it reminds me of a case when we were hearing that case in mumbai bench and you see the financial creditor i can name it now there is no problem the case is already uh, <clears throat> held and everything is over now ifci came to us as financial creditor uh, dr mishra and you know what happened uh, they were claiming some 640 crore rupees from the corporate debtor i was just looking at the papers and i asked them how much amount did you lend them originally they said 8 crore <laughs> now see the beauty 8 crore lent to somebody maybe in 1996 or so but in 2022 or 21 you are coming with a an amount of 640 640 crores claim against the corporate debtor now from 8 crore he may have you know raised just about 20 crore or something like that now can somebody humanly or by all by any means of imagination Against a loan of rupees eight crore, can somebody be uh, made liable of six hundred forty crore? So this suggests that when we are disposing of a case, we should not only consider the let down provisions of the Bayer Act of IBC. We have to keep our financial brain also active, apart from the accounting principles in mind. You cannot do the job. Oh, we are saying, right? कि पैसे देके उसको वसूल इस तरह से नहीं करो कि आदमी ही खत्म हो जाए। <laughs> so that is how it is and in one of the case uh, uh, dr mishra you held that because of the failure to file financial statement and returns that to only for 2 years should not result the company into striking off their name what was that in that particular in, case in, in that case what has happened this uh, sub lakshmi colonizers have paid some amount to mathura brindavan development authority now uh, some 70 71 lakhs if my memory is correct now apart from that they were also following this with the state government there was an order also passed by the honorable high court of allahabad that they should uh, the government they should meet the government authority and sort out the issue what is the fault of the organization in this case is that they have not filed the financial statements for two only for two financial year if my memory is correct 15 16 16 17 like that and because of that roc has issued a notice and thereafter they have stuck off the name roc has evidence power they can do even at any point of time under section 248 Subsection one of the Companies Act 2013, 252 requires the adjudicating, uh, sorry, NCLT and NCLAT to look for whether it is just or not. Now, since their money 71 lakhs is pending with the Mathura Brindavan Authority, they are in the process of allocating the land to them. it is not fair and proper for us if somebody has not filed the financial statement simply on the bare reading of a act we should or any type of issue income tax department also told okay they have they, they have not recently filed any returns but there is nothing adverse against them if nothing adverse against them is there then only non filing of income tax return for 2 years is not a material concept and it should come as a just we restored the company as a matter of fact dr mishra when we were sitting on the benches hmm. uh what we have observed that you know roc is doing a mechanical striking off of all those companies who are not filing their in, uh, uh, annual returns for two years consecutively 
what we need to look at is and it's just a 5 minutes job for uh, us to uh, sit and uh, uh, look at it if the company is in operation or if the company is having asset value assets with it and these two things are available even one of the, them is available in the balance sheet there is no harm in uh, restoring the company because otherwise the economic value of the asset will go waste they will not be able to use that or transfer that and if the company is in operation it is uh, uh, manufacturing or it is giving services there is no uh, reason why the company should be strike strike no i agree totally with you uh, we have to keep in mind our economy also i think company government has appointed some committee also to review the companies act and to get away with certain provisions which are very uh, derogatory type of provisions which is obstructing the development of the economy i think mm -hmm. that is a correct approach and we must maintain those correct themes in the law as a matter of fact uh, even if the company is not in operation not doing any business and even if some asset is available that asset will go waste in case we do not restore that company naturally naturally i agree totally with you i agree totally with you mm. and uh, finally thanks to sharma ji mm. that i have got the opportunity to speak and i hope and uh, i foresee that this steam is going to proliferate in a very big way and today i think mr sharma will be the only first company which has come in this platform in this format because then there will be a chain of firms in this case uh thank you dr mishra in fact we have discussed in detail uh the cases uh, some of the cases which you held and uh, uh the most beautiful part with this show is that not only the cases we will also be discussing the general atmosphere which is going on with respect to ibc from where we started in 2016 and where we are today and what are the tweaks required in the law so that it can uh, at attain its objectives for which it has been created dr mishra how do you uh, uh, visualize or how do you basically rate that the ibc has come up to today's level where we are standing and what is the way forward the way the first thank you mr sharma your thinking is towards the future of the law let me today tell you currently what the requirement is for enhancing the disposal rate at the adjudicating authority or appellate authority or at various other platforms if the disposal rate is poor means either way if we are not deciding we are keeping the cases then the stakeholders in the whole process are feeling disheartened this is one of the act where time frame was very much confirmed or very much pakka it was given that you have to close all these process in 330 days but we are finding now the cases are pending for 4 years or 3 years or 5 years which is hurting now what is the requirement should i will not suggest that 14 days cases are to be uh, listed and it is to be disposed of but a, within a let down some certain period is to be let down the case analysis in the format of abc classification is to be done and accordingly and these ia ia should be made as ia and jia come and go <laughs> otherwise it will continue ia and jia very yes case is case is one mm -hmm. ias are 5 to 6 mm -hmm. if the number of ia mas are more than uh, such number 7 400% 300% of the main cases how the cases are to be resolved so something is to be developed on this count and uh, maybe honorable apex court or they can lay down certain guideline on this or the government committee 
will have to review this how we can bring the aaye as a jaye otherwise it will continue like this and maybe it will this act should not go the way the other old, old acts have gone so it requires changes when it read needs young people uh, having depth of knowledge of this subject to see and suggest more to the god thank you very much dr ak mishra for you know taking your time out and coming for the show and it was a lovely discussion with dr ak mishra and you know very ins- insightful discussion and i hope that it will be beneficial for all the stakeholders of the ibc process that includes the sitting members of nclt and nclat resolution professionals valuers regulator creditors corporate debtors professionals and students thank you very much for being with us thank you thank you thank Mr. you Mr.